Somebody from Rocketdyne came to us and told us we had nothing to worry about. That was the first lie we were ever told. And uh, consequently, we've been told many lies since. Um, it's been 25 years. We've been trying to get this cleaned up to background. And we've spent many hours and much energy towards that end. Thank God we've had some good people with us. Dan Hirsch has been a driving force. Thank you, Dan. Um, I sort of relate this effort that we've made to um, raising a child. We started with the work group, and we um, it's like having a child, and you want to direct them the right way, and that's what we wanted from the start with this work group. We wanted a thorough cleanup to background. And through the years, uh, we spent a lot of time, energy, um, got a lot of support towards getting the correct cleanup. And it's like raising a child. You try, try to set them on a good moral course, and you do all you can to keep them on that course. However, sometimes things get out of your hands. They grow up, they get into bad company, and perhaps get on drugs, and you feel very sad about it. Unfortunately, this work group has gotten into a very bad drug, which is Boeing. And Boeing is a very powerful force right now, but somehow we've got to be able to break away from this powerful drug and save our cleanup to the utmost uh, uh, backgrounds as we were promised. I'm Marie Mason. Um, I live in the Susanna Knowles also, been there for 42 years now, raised my girls there. I have grandchildren older. Dan was referring to me when I started this. My girls were um, 9 and 11. I have a 15-year-old grandson now. So it's been a long haul. And it, it comes down on all of us. And it's really not fair that a handful of people that have on the other side of, they just don't want to see trucks come down the road. And for that reason, they don't want the cleanup. It makes absolutely no sense. They're, you know, it's like people that go to the polls and vote and they vote against their own interest. Well, these people are voting against their own interest because they're backing Boeing and the rest of them are listening to it. And in the meantime, the rest of all the millions of people that live around here, they're going to suffer the consequences. They will suffer the consequences for eternity. And we were hoping that our grandchildren wouldn't have to worry about it. I wouldn't want to bring my grandkids up and go to their grand park, never. But at least if it was cleaned up, those that choose to go there would choose to go there, and those that live us below it, we would know we would be relatively safe. I think it's just appalling when I listen to some of the things and I read some of their propaganda. I wonder why I'm doing this because it's like it's big, a big environmental haven up there. And we're talking about the birds and the bees and they have the bee farms and they have the tree farms and they're great for the students. It makes no sense. It's contaminated. It needs to get cleaned up and then they can do whatever they please to do on it. So those of us that have been doing it, me personally, we're tired. It's been 25 years of going to thousands of meetings. Now we're the crazy ones. So, you know, we just need other people to step up to the plate, and we're so thankful that those that have. But now's the time to keep fighting. Now's not the time to give up, because they're getting stronger and stronger, and Boeing is winning. Boeing has convinced the... I mean, they just have way more power than us. And when Boeing can get the governor of the state of California, who in my world was an environmental governor, to follow the way the path is going now, it's appalling to me, just totally appalling. So I, I, I urge all of you to tell your friends and tell your neighbors that what you read in the paper and some of the propaganda you hear, it's just bold-faced lies, lies to spend, they don't want to spend their money. Once many years ago, somebody in the government made a statement regarding the cleanup. And everyone has a price on their head. And the government has a whole table of how much we're all worth. 
And it's worth it to the government if X amount of people die because then it costs less. That's great if you're not the person that's dying or your loved one's not the person that's dying. But that's the way the government looks at it, and that's the way Boeing's looking at it. So I urge everybody out there to get involved. At least tell your neighbors. At least put some pressure on some elected officials. And I'm glad there's elected officials here today that are new, and they've stayed, and, and they're listening, and I'm sure they'll hear a different side of what's been out there. Thank you. I'm Bonnie Clee. I live on the Los Angeles side of Santa Susana. And I was a housewife raising two children And when in 1995 I was diagnosed with bladder cancer. And I found out that several studies have, had been done already from the cancer registry, which showed the census tract where I lived had a 50% higher rate of bladder cancer. Um, I was dumbfounded. Uh, went to my doctors, and two doctors asked me where I worked. And I said, oh my gosh, I worked at Santa Susana. And they said, well, it's an environmental cancer and it's very rare for a woman to be diagnosed with bladder cancer. And they said they were treating many, many workers for cancer from the field lab, so many that one of the doctors wrote a letter to Roncadine and said, what are you doing to your workers? They all had cancer. So that was my first clue uh, where I got it. Um, when I found out that it was very high in my community, I took a notebook and I went door to door. My community was built in 1959, actually the same month as the SRE had a partial meltdown. And I went door to door and I asked about the older worker or the older residents. Or the re I would find the oldest person on the block and she would recall, he or she would recall residents who had lived there and th those who had died from cancer. And my own street with 15 houses had uh, cancer in every single house, sometimes two out of the 15 houses. So I knew, I knew the, the rate of cancer was high. And then I started having the workers come to me when this program was started for compensation. All the sick workers called me because they knew I had been active in this work group since 95. And um, I told them about the program and how to, how to apply for it. So I've been seeing a lot of cancer. I feel like I've been counting bodies for 20 years and it's it's horrible when we when we had the AOCs get passed we, we were just jubilant and i felt especially good about it because very few of us really knew what happened up there i worked up there um, they very few people really knew what the effects were on the health and i thought well in the future i can I can die someday with peace of mind knowing that I did everything I could to prevent cancer from future generations, uh, from people going on that property, because it would all be cleaned up. And now it's at risk. And now I don't feel good about it. Um, there's another group of people, and they want to have a park up there. And... I just want to say that if anybody ever comes to you and said there were no cancer deaths, no health effects from that site, or that radiation is good for you, well, then you know for sure you're listening to the wrong group of people. This work group right here has been involved since 1989. And it's, it's the place where I got all the data I needed to uh, help the workers with the federal compensation program. So I just pray that the AOCs will be carried out and that they won't just walk away and leave that contamination on the site. Thank you. Well, I'm Shel Plotkin. I'm with the Southern California Federation of Scientists. The organization motto is science in the public interest. And that's what... Uh, uh, we're involved with uh, here. Uh, uh, my memory uh, isn't all that good these days, but uh, way back when there was a woman, Estelle Litt, who called everybody together to her house. She was concerned about the relicensing of this hot lab that they talked about. They got this uh, facility, had this facility, uh, which uh, took fuel rods apart 
and uh, uh, doing whatever they wanted to do with them. But uh, it was a toxic uh, area. And uh, it had been licensed uh, for, I guess the license would go by 20 years or so. And uh, it was running out, and they wanted it relicensed. She uh, was an intervener uh, with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission about relicensing this hot lab. And uh, so uh, uh, we, as an organization, decided we'd, uh, uh, we ought to look into this and uh, see if maybe uh, our support was needed or uh, whether we wanted to do it or not. So I visited up there. Uh, as I recall, I went up with Dan, but I don't, uh, that uh, may not, uh, whatever it is. What I remember is <clears throat> I went to see this, this uh, hot lab and uh, looked it over, and I talked to two of the workers there uh, from Atomics International uh, 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 as to uh, uh, what, go, uh, you know, how it's operated and uh, so forth. And uh, of particular interest was the fact that here they've got this, uh, the, uh, this facility with uh, uh, many feet of concrete walls. Uh, you talk, in the uh, uh, video, they talked about uh, many feet of leaded glass uh, to keep the radiation in and so forth. But how come uh, they had uh, uh, toxic radi uh, high-level radiation 10, 20, or 30 feet outside the building. And so we asked the workers, you know, well, how did that happen? And the simple answer, the roof leaked. And uh, that little story is an example of how the whole place has been operated. And uh, they, they saved the money to fix the roof because uh, they didn't want to fix the roof, so the stuff leaked outside. Uh, they had drains for catching it and so forth. Uh, today, uh, they don't want to spend the money to clean it up. I mean, that's what's involved here. It's a lot of money. I don't know how much, but uh, uh, it's a lot and whatever it is. Boeing doesn't want to. Sp Boeing has to spend the money, as I understand it, if they do clean it up, and uh, they're fighting tooth and nail uh, to not do that. So. Uh, here we are. Uh, uh, we want them to clean it up. It should be cleaned up. The only reason for not cleaning it up is because a big company doesn't want to spend money. And the only way they're going to spend money is the, the general public. All of us here get together and uh, come to the work group meetings and uh, 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 support our leadership uh, 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 for uh, doing what needs to be done, uh, like all the things Dan's doing. And uh, that's where we are. So uh, anyway, I hope you all join us and uh, and uh, we continue on. We've been, uh, I'm sure, getting tired of this. Uh, uh, this has been, uh, you know, when I first, uh, it must have been 20, 25 years ago or so, that first, maybe more. Yeah, and uh, first came up uh, up here and uh, started in with this, and, uh, Can't get and we're still at it. Uh, you know, uh, enough of this. Uh, uh, you know, let's organize and have demonstrations or something or w however the best political activity is, and force uh, uh, the government and Boeing over to spend the money to clean it up. Yeah.